Okay, so has anybody else besides me been in a bind before, been out on a job site, been somewhere, stripped out a screwdriver, or you did not have a long enough bit for your drill? This is an awesome hack to make an extended bit for your drill or just a replacement bit for your drill if you're in a bind. Take an old cheap screwdriver, saw off the handle, and now you have an extension bit. Welcome back guys. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some more of my most popular tips and tricks in short form. And this one is my most viral tip video. And I actually put this on YouTube Shorts and it has like 15 million views. Like I mentioned before, a lot of you all do not know, but before I started my YouTube channel, I did a lot of just woodworking and DIY tips and tricks. So here we go. So this one I actually learned the hard way. The end of my utility knife fell off and then I was noticing this little end on it. I'm like, what the heck is this for? All of this time I've been using pliers and different things like that to break my blade down and I always ended up with a jagged edge. It's actually used to snap that blade off cleanly. So for years I was doing it completely the wrong way and probably a very dangerous way when the answer was right in front of my face. And I've had over a million views on this video. It is all about the pain in the butt holes in the back of anything that is supposed to be hung. You know, if they're like routed out holes that you need to hang a picture frame on the wall just perfectly and set it in. This is just a tip on how to do it the easy way. Before I'd always try to measure, but it was always a challenge to get it lined up perfectly and level. And we're using painter's tape, some of my favorite stuff. And that's all we want to do is mark it with a screw. Now we need to have a square point, make sure that the tape is on your item square. And that way, whenever you put it on there, put your screws in, everything matches up, locks in perfectly to where it would fit those holes and lock in. This was an easy solution. This video was very popular because I was showing the different ways that you can use an oscillating tool. These are one of my favorite tools. They are so handy. They have so many different applications. I mean, from cutting sheetrock to cutting wood to sanding, you can get an attachment for about anything. Now the attachments are expensive, so if it's a wood blade, do not cut through a nail or anything like that or you're going to pay for it, but this video did great. So we all have those tools, especially if we have children, we all have those tools that were left outside. They have rusted up or you find a good deal somewhere and you have to buy it, but they're rusted up, they're seized up, or they just need a little TLC. This video was just on restoration of hand tools. Works perfect. A little bit of vinegar, a little bit of salt. It's almost like we're making pickles. And a little bit of time. You'll have your tools looking like new in no time. This was another video that I kind of took for granted that people knew. The video did really well. The ends of your hand clamps are not just for clamping. If you turn around the end, you can use it to spread things out. So spread things evenly. If you have a small bow in something, you can spread it out before attaching it to your workpiece. Super handy little trick that I actually use all the time and woodworking. Now this is probably one of my favorite tools, okay? So tools that aren't tools. It's a craft mat. It actually is a tool, but for crafters. Oftentimes you'll find them in the craft session. I'll throw a link in the description to some of these. They're not cheap, but they're totally worth it. Every single square on there is a single square inch. There's all kinds of angles. There are tons of information just on this mat. Perfect for laying out designs. So this was my little workstation for putting together small items, boxes, things like that. I needed everything at my disposal. I wanted to be able to just sit on a bench, sit down, good lighting, go to work. So I started making everything to hold all of my different tools that I use frequently, magnets. These little bar magnets were like, I don't know, four or five bucks at Harbor Freight. Maybe not even that, but you can get them anywhere. I'll drop a link. Made a little holder for them onto my scrap wood that I'm actually using underneath. It needs to be good and flat and essentially just made a magnetic stand to hold all my drill bits, punches, just random tools that you'd have to get up and go find, come back, you need to change out a Phillips head into a square head, to whatever, star bit, but it's all there, ready for you, perfectly organized. You see in the background, I also put some organization for pens, pencils, and some of those standoffs. That and this one's gonna be on sanding blocks. I love sanding blocks, I love these, but they're expensive and they wear out pretty quick. Basically, I'm just taking my saw and making a groove that will actually hold the sandpaper in place. It goes a heck of a lot further than other types of sandpaper, and you can make several different types of blocks. Again, another cool project just made out of scraps. Okay, so this one's going to be just maintenance on your air compressor. There's a lot of people that do not know that you need to drain the moisture out of the air compressor at least once a month, and there is a plug for that. It's just a little valve. 
Make sure that you have a little bit of air in the compressor. That's probably what I'm talking about here. And just drain it until it is empty. This will prevent water from building up in there, rusting out the inside of your air compressor and also from shooting out moisture onto your workpiece. Another tool tip, this is just talking about keeping your brad nailer lubed up. If not, all of the sawdust we work around will eventually get hung in there and make everything rough. It will not operate correctly. Theoretically, you are supposed to oil this before each use, but you know how it goes. At least have a bottle laying around with your pneumatic tools. Throw a drop or two in there whenever you think about it and it will extend the life of your tools. And this one is my most viral tip video. I actually put this on YouTube Shorts and it has like 15 million views. And most of it is from people calling BS. Okay, so with short form video, you get a lot of that. You get a lot of people arguing back and forth, trying to argue with me, whatever, about no, that's not right. That doesn't work. That can't work. So this is how to take a dent out of wood using an iron and a little bit of water. This actually works as long as you do not break the fibers of the wood. So if you have a huge dent in, the fibers are broken, not going to work. It's going to bring it back up a little bit, but it's not going to look great. But if you have just dented the wood, this will work. I promise you it will work. So I had tons of people to actually get my back that worked in fine woodworking industry like musical instruments, things like that, violin makers. And they would say, hey, yes, we keep these around. We keep irons in our shop just for this. And that is why I actually keep an iron in my shop. If I'm working on a project, something slips, put a big dent in it, I'm almost finished. You know, usually you're freaking out, but as long as I did not break those fibers, I can pull that in out. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to smash that subscribe button and follow for more. And if you have any of your own little tips and tricks that you think are super cool or just neat, throw them in the comments. I would love to read them. And also the other people that watch this channel would love to read them. So with this community, we can help each other out. And that's one way for it to grow. So until next time, guys, see ya.